Alright lads, continuing the trend of looking at lower battle rating premiums, today we're going to be reviewing the Panther Dauphine, famously named after Belle Dauphine. You might be asking why the French would do this, turns out they're just all a bunch of degenerates. Joking aside, well, the first part was a joke, the French are all degenerates after all. But this tank was basically a captured panther, obviously, which was used after World War II by the French. It sits in the fourth rank of the French tech tree, obviously, and it is located at battery rating 5.7, pretty much the same as the German panther vehicle. This is a premium and will have to be purchased. For the cost of 6,090 golden eagles, this tank can be yours. This is quite a lot of money, and doesn't particularly sit at a very strong point in the French tech tree, but we'll cover that shortly. Anyway, like all other premium vehicles in the game, it'll cost you 10,000 silver lines to put it in your lineup, and for the expert in his qualifications, it's 340,000 silver lines for the former, and 890 golden eagles for the latter. There are many downsides for this premium, mainly to do with the actual French tech tree itself. It's not very big, and isn't particularly in meta, especially around the battery rating of 5.7, where there is a distinct lack of competent French vehicles. This isn't really a fair criticism, however, as that's more of a failure of the French tech tree, rather than of this tank. Anyway lads, before we get into the mitty gritty of the stuff, I'd just like to thank today. Are you struggling to unlock new tanks, planes and ships, or feeling left behind due to not having a premium account? Well, with the free GE Android app, you can get it all for free. The developer of this app works directly with Gaijin, is 100% legal, and breaks none of the terms of service. Carry out small tasks, such as completing surveys and watching ads, and in return, you'll receive free Golden Eagles for War Thunder, speeding up your progression. When you earn 28 or more Golden Eagles, you can deposit them straight into your War Thunder account. Simple. If you download and install free GE with my link in the description below, you can enter my personal code and receive 10 Golden Eagles for free. Using this link directly helps me as a creator, but more importantly lads, it helps you. So let's help each other. Download free GE from the Google Play Store and start planning on what you're going to spend those Eagles on. Thanks again to free GE for sponsoring this video. Alright, let's not waste any more time jumping straight into the mobility and the survivability. And because this basically is a mid-war World War II vehicle, it's not going to have the greatest of mobility. Especially considering it is a German origin, which basically means it's going to be far too heavy and over-engineered. All I'm going to say is, thank god there's no such thing as maintenance in War Thunder. Anyway, the tank is powered by an introducing 600 horsepower. Combined with the vehicle's incredible weight of 44.8 tonnes, it gives the tank a pretty bad power to weight ratio of 13.4 horsepower per tonne. This certainly isn't unusable, but you aren't going to be zipping around the map like your little Italian allies. Instead, you're going to have to take things slow and steady. Which brings us on to the top speeds of the Panther. You can reach a top speed of 46 km per hour going forwards, which isn't too bad to be honest, but it's the reverse speed of this tank which is the true letdown. Just like British and Soviet vehicles, this tank has a god awful reverse speed of around 4 km per hour. Now with a reverse speed that poor, no matter how many times you pray to the god of Krupp style, or how closely you follow the Führer's orders, it isn't going to save you if you YOLO around the corner and get yourself into a shit situation. While the Panthers are famed for their good survivability, at least from the front, if you overexpose your side, then you're pretty much dead meat. And you pretty much really are dead if a round does penetrate your armour. For a start, the tank has a crew of 5 men, with a driver and assistant driver in the hull, and a gunner commander and loader in the turret. While it's unlikely to be one shot killed from the front, mainly due to the spacing, it's a different situation from the side. A penetrating round from the side is almost certainly going to kill pretty much everybody in the fighting compartments. But again, this is true of pretty much every tank. We also have one other issue, and that is the German habit of just throwing ammunition anywhere in the vehicle that there's a slight free space. So next to the driver and assistant driver, below the gunner and loader, there's just ammo everywhere. Again, this basically means if an enemy round actually penetrates your armour, at least the lower half of the tank, it's likely going to pop that turret off, starting the German space exploration program. But that of course does depend on the enemies actually penetrating armour. And luckily for us, while the Panther is a medium tank technically, it has the armour of more of a heavy tank. And in War Thunder at 5.7, it does play more like a heavy tank than an actual medium. I'd take a Panther far more often than I'd take a Tiger. And this is shown in the armour. If we look at the upper frontal plate, it's 80mm thick, which isn't amazing, but it's sloped at around 55 degrees, giving it an effective thickness of around 127mm of armour. 5 inches of armour is certainly nothing to scoff at, 
and at battery rating 5.7, there are very few guns that can actually penetrate your upper frontal plate. The same cannot be said though for the turret front and gun mantlet. The turret front itself is around 110mm thick, which is pretty much easily penetrated by all tanks at around 47 upwards. And then the worst part of the armour, at least the main part where you will be taking shots, is the actual gun mantlet itself. This is only 100mm thick, and considering it's the main part of the actual turret, it is a very large weak spot. An experienced player isn't going to shoot your upper frontal plate, they're going to shoot you right in the face, in the turret. This will almost certainly destroy your gun, as well as killing the gunner and commander, if not everyone else in the turret. So while you do have very truly armour in the panther, don't get overconfident and think you're playing an IS-4 or a mouse. Enemy tanks can penetrate your armour fairly easily from the front, but due to the panther's long barrel 75mm gun, you can also penetrate enemies from the front. This tank is armed with the 75mm KWK-42 gun, a tank that has more penetration than the 88mm found on the Tiger-1. You carry 82 rounds of ammunition in total, however I don't recommend carrying around 30 rounds into battle. The gun has a stock reload time of 9.62 seconds, but with an ace crew that drops down to 7.4 seconds. One of the downsides of pretty much all the Panther series of tanks is the turret rotation speed. When you get this tank stock, it'll rotate at 14 degrees per second, and again with an ace crew, that increases to 20 degrees per second. Even the ace crew Panther isn't brilliant though when it comes to turning its turret, and it is a major weakness of pretty much all the Panther variants. Again, this is why the Panther plays more like a heavy tank. It's got a powerful gun as well as thick armour, but it's pretty slow at reacting to emerging threats. The gun also has 20 degrees of gun elevation, as well as 8 degrees of gun depression, giving you fairly good gun handling characteristics. The tank has a nice wild field of view, as well as good aim, making this gun a joy to snipe with. But let's move on to the ammunition, of which we only have 2 rounds. Notably, we are lacking the armour piercing composite rigid round, found on some of the other Panther variants. While this doesn't give you a super high penetrating round, I haven't found it with too much of an issue, although you will slightly struggle with the Sherman Jumbos. Anyway, your stock round is a PZGR 39-42. This travels fairly quickly at 935 meters per second, mainly due to your incredibly long 75mm gun. At a range of 100 meters, it can penetrate 188mm of flat armor, and at the extreme angles of 60 degrees, at the same range of 100 meters, can still penetrate 64 millimeters of armor, making it perfect for penetrating T-34s, as well as the other hordes of Soviet armor. It also contains 28.9 grams of TNT filler, giving you pretty good post-penetration damage effects. However, it is nowhere near as effective as the bursting charge of the Tiger One's main gun, although I do tend to get one-shot kills with this vehicle, so it doesn't particularly matter. The other round is a high explosive shell, which is practically useless. Due to the fairly long reload of this tank, there's no real point in actually shooting HE at other vehicles. If you come across a light vehicle, you may as well fire at it with your machine gun, and then just shoot it with the APCBC round. Sure, you might overpen them, but you're probably still going to kill them in the same amount of time. The tank also has a rifle caliber machine gun, but that's pretty much it for the offensive capabilities of the tank. So, the question is, should you buy it? Well, it certainly is a nice little fun vehicle to play. However, I wouldn't say it's a great grinder. Not down to the tank itself, but mainly due to the lineup. The main issue is that France doesn't really have a 5.7 lineup. It kind of jumps from battery rating 5.0 straight up to 6.7, which means when you're playing the Panther Dauphine, you either have to take along backup, which is significantly lower battery rating than you do. For example, I take the M4A1 FL10, the 5.3 Sherman Jumbo, and the M4A4 SA50 all of which are below battery rating 5.7. Alternatively, you can up-tier the vehicle slightly. Your guns will still be effective at this battery rating, but your armour and mobility are a lot worse in comparison. Because of this, I wouldn't say it's a great grinder for the French. In the same 4th rank of the French tech tree, you have the Sumoir SM, a battery rating 7.3 heavy tank, which does have incredible good firepower, and is also a pretty good grinder. While I am being very critical of the lineup of this tank, I do struggle to find genuine criticism of the tank itself. I've had a lot of fun playing it to get footage for this review, and you can easily curb stomp German players, who play Germany so much that they don't know how to counter German tanks. 
So they run across you on the battlefield and basically have a nervous breakdown, allowing you to quickly dispatch them. Again, my main issues with this tank aren't about the tank itself, but more just the French tech tree in general really. This is a psycho sniper video after all though lads, you know I've got to find a way to throw some French hate here in it anyway. But one thing I will mention is that the win rate at 5.7 for the French tech tree is absolutely abysmal. I didn't really win too many of the games I played despite having pretty decent scores. German and Soviet teams do tend to club around this battle rating and the French get put with the Americans and it's basically just a, a cringe fest of shit players. But the tank's great, I do like playing it a lot, it's just a shame that they've not really got a lineup around it. Anyway lads, if you enjoyed the review, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing. And if you loved it, consider becoming a channel member like T, Biff Webster, Tomato Soured, Deboa LX, Just Someone, Destroy Rating 05, Dr. Bob, Tans, William Tessier, and Lola Alfonsi. Thank you very much for becoming members, lads, and I'll see you in the next review.